Hi, people. Um, hey, uh, so um, Ian just came out of an aha video. I'm just kidding. Uh, now, actually, Ian today has had an audition. You want to tell everybody how it was? The actual experience? Yeah. I went in and I sat there uh, probably about 10 minutes. Filled out my stuff, sat there for about 10 minutes. Then we went in, sat four in a row on a bench, and we sang Kumbaya. Whoa, well, that was part of the actual audition? You know, the, at first we went in and it was a mix up, and two of the guys weren't supposed to be there, so they left, and then two new guys came in. And then the actual audition was we sang Kumbaya. <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> think that's, um, that's funny because, yeah, you, it's just supposed to be for a, a hippie in the woods, right? Yeah, like camping. I see. So, so you were dressed for the part? Yeah. Okay, so kind of, kind of like a, a broke back mountain kind of outfit. Yeah, and I, well, I wore my jacket too. I know this doesn't look quite hippie. No, like it looks more blue. country. I mean, the, the the scarf gives more of a cowboy vibe. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like I, I told Ian that I used to dress like this in high school because I wasn't a hot fan, and I you know I just liked that, and that, that was like decades ago. So, but anyway, um, so how many people were there? Uh, total that audition for the role. Um, do you have that number? Well, on the call list, I saw about 20 people, but the, that was only on one page, and there could have been pages before, um, and I got in pretty close to 5 o'clock, so there probably wasn't too many more people after that. But I knew that at 5, they started seeing a different role. For the same commercial? Yeah. And this is a, uh, can we say what it's for? Um, I could. Do you think I should? Um, I, I guess if you don't know, we probably should. Okay. Let's just say that it's a big company, and uh, and I would like, you know, I'd be very happy if you got the part. Um, and it's great to see that you're investing into your career again. Yeah, man. Because that is going to lead you to. Well, that's going to lead you to where you gotta go. It's, I mean, just the, uh, the whole philosophizing YouTube. I mean, YouTube is a hobby. It can't be life, you know. And and it's not. We we know it's not. I mean, most people know it's not. Uh, people just accuse you of making too many videos, but. So what? Yeah. Like, I mean, ad revenue, if you if you got like a million, one, like a million point five or 1.5 million her, uh, per video, like every three weeks, if you can draw like 1.5 million, you can make several thousand dollars a month. Well, but I don't know, several, uh, maybe an extrapolation, but like two to three plus thousand dollars a month if you're, if you're making those numbers. So it's worth it to you to invest in getting people to watch your videos? Mm-hmm. See, so so that's a good thing. So it's not that Ian doesn't have anything better to do. He's considering, you know, what what's best for him, which is good. I'm so glad to see you pursuing your goals, because I think that this is something that was a little bit in the back burner there for a while. Uh, you also have a uh, you actually have a part in Scream of the Bikini Two coming up. Oh, I don't know. Oh no, I thought you were going to audition for that. I definitely would like to audition mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. But right now you're you audition for Bow, in a Sacred Fools, right? Yeah. And uh, have you heard back from them? No. Okay, well, I'm just, you know, I'm rooting for you. I'm sure yeah. people over there are rooting for you as well. And um, and, and it's just that so we have this, these people. I mean, Ian's not the only actor that I know, and he knows a lot of actors. We have this pool of talent around here. It would be great if we could put it, you know, pull it together and, and actually put that talent to use. Yeah. So right now you're working on your website. Yeah. No, Dreamweaver. You're learning Dreamweaver to bring iancrossland.net yes. into existence. Right on, man. Right. Right. And you want to tell the, the people what, it, what it's going to be about? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of it's like a meeting place. It's kind of like it's way better than YouTube to get to know me. Oh, I see. Um, and it'll be, uh, you know, it'll be a mix of business and pleasure and knowledge and communication. And, uh, I mean, it'll be about what I like, and then it'll be about me, myself. I'm going to try and get outsiders to write about me, um, like biography style, or collaborate with me to write about. Or just give them an opinion on what, you know, on your videos and stuff? Oh, that'd be great, yeah, like uh, testimonies and stuff. It's not, uh, it's not, please pay attention, I mean, be, be aware that it's not a place to worship Ian Crossland, it's a place to be, know him as a person, because there, there needs to be this distinction there, because you've talked before about um, doing things, and people thought that it was you being self-aggrandizing, and but I, I just wanted to say that I, I am aware that um, you know everybody in acting or in entertainment industry, they all do this kind of thing, 
And a lot of people think it's, you know, it's silly. And when you say, for example, you're going to put a PayPal button on your a website, people just go ballistic. Why? You have the option to donate. You have the option to not donate. Donate if you want, right? Yeah. All right. All sorts of things. Like we can raise money for mm -hmm. equipment and stuff to make the videos better, to make the art better, to make our transportation easier, to get to better locations, to get other people out here. Oh yeah. I mean, if you got, if anybody out there wants to give us a, a plane ticket to bring Thomas over here to have a lovely, you know, argument with our friend Ian, uh, then, you know, I'm pretty sure you could donate through the PayPal button or you could send Thomas directly a, uh, uh, a ticket uh, right to Thomas the Daxter, uh, Sweden, P.O. Box. No, just kidding. Go ahead. That sounds a great idea. <laughs> but it is an idea. I tend to get over euphoric about and talk a lot, but it's really supposed to be about you. This website is going to be about everything you and Crossland, right? Career, personal, business. Yeah, yeah. Should there be a focus on this website? I mean, we, are you going to focus on one thing? Well, I don't know. Entertainment and science are like... I'm trying to mix the two. How do, would science what, work itself into it? It's tough to say because I'm still not really a scientist. I, you know? I mean, well, I no. You'd, have, you'd actually have to read yeah. a lot of science. Yeah. We can't just pull these theories out of our asses because when we do that, it's fun if we're like stoned. Uh, not, not in my case stoned, but in my case would be drunk. Um... It would be fun, however, um, when we realize that other people have already done the research, it kind of looks silly. Yep. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Right. And uh, are people going to be able to buy uh, merchandise on your... Do you, uh, not not because of the quality of the merchandise, but to donate. Because a lot of the times people are more willing to donate if they're getting something back. Oh, that'd be cool. Maybe, yeah. Like autograph photos? Or sure, yeah. I not those chances. cafe press clock things. It's just ridiculous. See, that was kind of weird. You know, something I'm, stuff I make or stuff that's, I mean, photos are interesting if people want them. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I'd like to hear like critics or what people think, ideas that people would like to see sold through the website. Okay, or I, I'm, I'm going to interject here because I know of something that is uh, something that I should talk about. Uh, a lot of people believe that um, Ian has illusions, delusions of grandeur because he wanted to sell, for example, his pink cup, but he was selling merchandise with his face on it. Um... I'll tell you what, my view on this is that everybody in the entertainment industry does that. It's not uncommon. And so, to me, it's perfectly normal that you're trying to do that. I'll do that. I mean, I sell my paintings. I mean, that's my art. You're selling your art. I mean, uh, so what, what is your view? When people think that you think too much of yourself because you think somebody's actually going to bid on your cup just because it was yours, what do you say about that? Well, that, I actually have the cup. I'll grab the cup as I'm talking about it. Ian is now taking a short leave to grab the all-important pink cup. Don't miss. Um. Um. Blues, clues, blues, clues. Oh, he's found the first clue. So there were actually two pink cups. Um, one I took to Burning Man, and this one I didn't take to Burning Man. But I didn't, I, I like, I never really intend, it wasn't about getting money for it, although at the time I was strapped for cash, and I was okay. like, what can I, how can I make money? But it was like, I was really interested to see what would happen, like how the people would respond to it. And if it was like a genuine thing and, I, and someone paid like 600 bucks and they wanted it, I probably would have sold it. But yes, it's capitalism. It is, dude. It's, and it, it's fine. Capitalism is fine. You get what you, you know, uh, people pay how much they think something is worth and you give it to them if you think it's worth it to you. It's, it's fine. Uh, but I think that the question they had is, do... Um, they thought that you were very self-important about doing this, but you don't feel that way, do you? Um, I, I bet some people thought I was acting like I was more valuable, or that the, the videos I was making were more seen than I thought they were. That like, uh, the, but I wasn't placing a value on it. I just I was auctioning it for whatever value because I was interested to see at that as point an experiment. Of my life, yeah. And, and it pulled. Well, just be aware that some people are going to say, hey, that's not quite it. I watched that video and you actually thought that you were worth a lot of money. I mean, that the cup was worth a lot of money because it belonged to you. Well, what a I, lot of people are yeah, going to say that. How I was talking it up like I'm the center of the world, the God and all that. Like, I mean, I really felt that stuff getting stoned a lot. Like, I really felt like I was controlling weather and stuff rather yeah. than part of it. 
Yeah, I think that pe- a lot of people who don't do a lot of um, weed, they can't relate to that. And they, and it's a really, really a shame because you got the situation where uh, no matter what you, you say afterwards, they're going to think that you, you were either lying before or that you're lying now about what you really think. I then think I it's just they get stoned and find out for themselves. Yeah. I suggest <laughs> if you if you think if if you've never been stoned and you saw me stoned and you think and, and you don't know what to think, get stoned. Do the fucking drug before you talk about the fucking drug. I, I, you know, and then in the same sentence, I'm going to say I'm not I'm not going to tell I'm not going to suggest a stone. You know what the thing is? Our country was founded on people getting stoned. No, our country was Why? founded on liberty. Well, because liberty. they were stoned and they realized what liberty was. Okay. Do you it's really think Washington. that? Because yeah, you're going to research... Washington had huge crops of marijuana. Did he? Yeah. I haven't re- really read about this, huge. but if he did, it's fine by me because I think the liberty and individual rights are the most important values, most important American values there are. And that's why I, you know, I, I think that... Um, the socialism doesn't apply to America very well. It doesn't adapt to America very well. Uh, because this is, we need a place where liberty, individual rights are still protected. The Constitution is still taken seriously. It's still taken to mean what it's supposed to mean, what the forefathers meant to, it to be. Not, you know, because we're, we're in a moment right now where civil, civil liberties are being taken away from us every single day. We have the TSA, which is now totally Soviet, you know, <laughs> annihilation of human rights or whatever, and, and we have these things happening, there's these wars that we, you know, the forefathers would never put up with any of that. But I, I, I'm done with the little um, Oliver Wendell Douglas uh, speech. I'm sorry, back to Ian's career, which is what we would like to speak about. Um, there's a point where, you know, you're going to have to understand some people will see you as a person. They will see you as a friend, a potential friend, or somebody, you know, a normal person. But there are going to be people out there who's going to see you as a, 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 a fountainhead or a, or a cult leader or, uh, you know, a, a movie star. And they will either worship you or hate you. You know, regardless of what you say, you cannot please everybody. I just wanted to say that once you put that website up, you're opening yourself to all those people. And you, and you I mean, I'm, I shouldn't be putting you on the spot and by saying this this stuff but but it's reality and you know you're just gonna have to deal with it we're cool <laughs> that's it that's cool yeah. so you're used to this kind of thing I, I've gotten pretty used to it yeah mm. it was another thing man it was like trial by fire man do this YouTube stuff like being honest like I forced myself to be honest it wasn't a natural thing and I had to use some drugs to get to the point where I was comfortable being honest don't you strange. think, though, that when you use the drugs, you were less honest because the drugs did a lot of the talking? I was, I was less empathic. Like I was less. It's hard to say because I was honest about the drugs. Eventually, I, I, I started telling people that I was smoking weed, so I was trying, in the same vein. It was. Okay, I think that the people would like to know if you by now has figured it out that the stuff you said about AIDS not being real was drug-induced. Yeah, the f- well, probably, yeah. I don't think I ever would have said anything like that publicly without some sort of drug that caused me to not worry about it. I'm more concerned about the actual thought. I mean, that, don't you think that the drugs made you think that? Because, I mean, it's pretty well known that it, you know... In the, in this, uh, I gotta admit, it was a lazy thing for me to say. The way I phrased it was very lazily said and more for shock value than for exactly what I was thinking. So you really think that that, that, that this is not backpaddling, this is you, your honest opinion? That you, you really believe that um, this was said for shock value? Yeah, when I said HIV does not exist, that was said for shock value. Because I remember after that that you said that you found out some more information and you changed your view. I'm not trying to trap yeah. you on this. I, I really wanted to know because there's a lot that, that that one video stuck to a lot of people. It didn't stick to me in particular because you know I don't really care. But <laughs> um, because um, ahem. sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I just I just wanted to know that. Yeah. I saw a video where, so where I read some stuff where people were saying that the HIV virus had never been isolated and no one had ever seen it. And it was it's from a like, virus, right? Yeah. And uh, 
it may have been from the 90s when that was said, and then, I'm talking so loud. No, it's okay, I think that we need it so the microphone picked yeah. up. And then, after that, people were like, no, you idiot, pointed me in this direction, and then I went and looked at some other stuff, and then I saw that they actually had isolated the virus, and that it, or the retrovirus, I guess you'd say. So it does exist, the HIV retrovirus. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, when I said I don't care, it's because what I really meant is to say is that I don't, I don't see why so many people make such a big fuss out of that. You know, I just, well, you said a lot more things that were even, you know, more insane, so to speak, that they sounded more insane than that. And, and people, you know, didn't say anything about it, but you reached the AIDS thing. It's like you offended all the, the, the sacred cows of YouTube. I think... Okay, there's a couple things about that. One is like when you've been told something your whole life, and then someone comes along and says that it's not true, or that this is true and that's less true. Hmm. It, there's a reaction, like a like a, a violent change, almost like a, a ripping away of something or something. So they got offended, is what you're saying? F yeah, because they're like they're offended, but they're understanding. Yeah, but then there's another part of when when you have been told something your whole life that didn't necessarily, you didn't necessarily believe it, but there, it was the only thing you were told about it, is so you just went along with it, and then someone comes along and says that it's not true, it's almost like jealousy that you weren't the one that said that it wasn't true, or you weren't the one that questioned it. That you, that it I would say, I would just say this, shock, shock it up to collectivist mentality. I don't care what people say if it's, if it's something incredibly crazy. I mean, I hear people say that the Holocaust didn't happen. And it's like, um, according to my inside info, it isn't quite that way. Um, although I do know it's been greatly, greatly exaggerated. And if I say that, then I'm going to be trouble, in trouble with the courts in Germany. And I don't even want to go there. But uh, what I'm saying is that um, people should be able to enjoy freedom of speech. Because if what they're saying is insane, you have the right to not deal with the person who's saying those things. You have the right to choose your friends. If I'm living, if we're living in a place where you can't voice your opinion because speech is restricted, then you're going to get into a situation, for example, you, you could know a racist all your life and not know that that person is a racist and never know you're dealing with an asshole. And that could be coloring. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, because uh, he, the only reason why this person isn't out there shouting their irrational bullshit is because there's a law saying that. And then you're still treating that person like, you know, it's worth treating them like a person. But in reality, it's not. It's just that they've got this law that doesn't let you see who people are. And besides, if you start restricting speech, you know, because you don't like what they're saying, so you're restricting all speech. Fahrenheit, uh, was it, 451, 415, I can never remember oh, the number. No, that's a different one. Oh, interesting. Well, I guess it's been long enough. I rented long enough, and i got to go home. Maggie's making fish for dinner. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I, did, I wanted to add to the Holocaust. Oh, thing. I'm sorry. I read there. We don't talk about that one subject. I'm like, like uh, I have like restrictions that I shouldn't talk about that. The Holocaust. Well, you can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I can't because it's not because the... if I do, I'm in trouble back home because there's laws about that. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's just, it's just that they only really the the media only focuses on one area of the Holocaust. Like there was an American Holocaust around that time. Like and there's a Japanese Chinese one too. And a Russian one. Like million. 60 million people probably overall were, uh, by the governments, were killed. And it's like citizens and stuff. And you, you only hear about, well, I mean, you don't only hear about the Jewish people that were killed in Germany and in like the German Empire. Well, but like, the, 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 the Holocaust, they think Jewish slaughter by the Nazis. And it's like, dude, what about Rwanda. the American government killing homeless people? What were you saying? Rwanda. Rwanda genocide? Cambodia. What was that? I, I'm talking like during World War oh, II okay. and right around that, that era. Yeah, there was Russia, there was Jap Japanese killing Chinese by the thousands. There was, you know, it, it was oh, big. Man. American, but I, dude, American Holocaust. I mean, the American government, at least is what I've been told, took like in the 20s, 8 million people just disappeared. I'm going to give do you a favor and I'm going to stop this video right here. I, I'm... I'm this is, I mean, yeah, because I haven't actually, I wasn't there. You have to, you have to, know anyone that you have to get there, a little bit more uh, information, but um, it would be nice to discuss this at another time, because i got to go. Okay, this is a controversial video. <laughs> it turned out to be controversial, I wasn't trying. Um, I just keep going, man, this is just the tip of the iceberg, dude. Oh, yeah, but... Yeah.
Yeah, but without the actual facts, we can't go for it. Real quick. No, I gotta go. American Holocaust. The reason why um, it's because it's such a tip of an iceberg. But if we start talking about it, we're gonna be here all night. Okay. So we really have to stop because Maggie's gonna be angry. Okay, cool. I'm coming home, love. <laughs>